Hi, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews from Dread Central. How are you? I am doing great. How you doing, Mary Beth? I'm so good. I'm so stoked to chat with you about The Nun too. Oh, thank you. So, okay, my first question for you is, I'm very curious. You have the coolest honor of having all of, almost all of your, I think all of your feature films as part of the Conjuring universe, which is like the coolest thing ever now with three features. What, how, like you, how has your perspective on directing horror change like what have you learned from working within this franchise that has such a specific look and feel and what has that been like to work across three films in this franchise it's been an absolute honor i think that it's uh yeah. i love this series and this franchise as much as as anyone out there I, you know i it was just we had a screening last night and i was um kind of opened it up with um the, you know, right now, this this year, The Conjuring is 10 years old. The the Conjuring universe has been going 10 years strong, which- it's Really? Makes, 10 years? I know, it makes everyone feel old. It's like, what? <laughs> 10 years ago? Because I remember Wild. seeing that movie for the first time. And I, I grew up watching horror movies. I love horror movies. And I was like, oh, I've seen everything. But when I saw that movie for the first time, it was like I was watching a horror movie for the first time. It was like I had never seen anything before and it sucked me in. And it's an experience that I think so many people have shared. I think that that, that feeling and the, the power of that oh, yeah. is like, is, it was amazing. And it's the reason we're still talking about it today. It's the reason that we have this universe. Um, and uh, I, it's been one of the greatest pleasures. I think that the, I think there's a lot of things that I've always known about the, I mean, the movies are always scary. I think that's one of the kind of the touchstones about it. I think that one of the things that I really have come to love and respect even more is just the, the, the role that faith plays in all these movies. Um, oh, okay. You know, there, there's, there's, I, I was raised Catholic and I'm not practicing anymore. Um, but it is, it's amazing how much this this speaks to so many people and and how the the element of faith you know you can't talk about god without talking about the devil and and the idea of um uh, of this is this kind of like you know that that kind of like that that battle line between good and evil um is is really really powerful and i think that that's what makes it feel so much bigger than than just an individual movie is it like it reaches into something bigger and, and ancient within all of us cool okay so it must be really really weird to work on these movies as a as a as an ex-catholic then i feel like i would start being scared of the devil again projecting my own fears as an ex-catholic onto <laughs> movies like this that make me like i don't know man i don't believe in it but who knows so i'm curious what that experience has been like too or if it just doesn't really factor into anything in your head at all well i was excommunicated because of it they were like they said that no just kidding. no way oh you were oh i was like oh my god cool <laughs> you got look but you got kept going like, like i would have bought it i would have absolutely bought it. <laughs> it it came from the pope he was like mike shavs you're excommunicated this is too evil this is too, if that happens, of honors. I would have loved that. Highest that would have been the best headline of all time. I was going to say like biggest, funniest headline of all time. No, none too <laughs> gets, gets you kicked out of the church. <laughs> Let's just, go with that. I think that we should just start that <laughs> and then it'll become a truth. Starting rumors. Exactly. Someone needs to put that as a Wikipedia um, entry. I don't know. I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. Let's, let's do that. I'm isolating, posting it with no context, you know. <laughs> Just kidding, everybody. It's not actually happening. <laughs> uh, no, it, I think but, it's, uh, I, I think, hold on. Let me answer your question. I, <laughs> we're going on that tangent. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, I think that the, it, it definitely gave me a perspective. Um, you know, I, even though I'm not a practicing Catholic, I, I love the Catholic church and I, there's, there's so much, I mean, it has so much history to it, and it's there's so much. I mean, first of all, they got the best churches. No one's gonna argue with that. You know, you look across the world, Catholics got the best churches. But there's there's so much incredible history and dark history that is just intertwined in the Catholic Church, and it's really fascinating. And I I, I think that that's something that 
this movie definitely gets into real Catholic, not just lore, but real Catholic history. And there's, without getting, giving anything away, and I think that that's one of the things that when I, I was talking to people after the screening and they really connect to that. They really love those details. They really love the, because I think it grounds it and it validates their faith and their understanding of their faith. Um, but then it also just kind of like, it makes them realize like, oh, we're, we're not just like making this, we're not making it all up. We're making some of it up, but there's like, we're not making it all up. Stuff. There's, there's some like historical documents about these things. That's so cool. Well, yeah. so, okay, you talked about churches and I want to hear about some of the locations you shot at because there's some really incredible locations from the monastery, to some of these churches. And I wanted to hear how you found it, especially the monastery that serves as, ex-monastery that serves as the uh, the uh, boarding school, like how you found that and what it was like filming there. Like, was that a set you built? Was that an actual location? I'd love to hear more about that. That was in an actual location. And that is, uh, it's in it's in Aix-en-Provence and it is, um, the, you know, I, I grew up in Los Angeles. So like uh, an old building to me is like 50 years old and you go to France and it's like a new building for them is like a hundred years old and everything is like, and that's like the newest thing they got. It's like, everything goes back from there. The, um, the, the school was, is basically in the, the center of um, Aix-en-Provence and it's the, the, uh, like across from the hall of justice and the hall of justice is like basically goes back for like hundreds of years and they would have like like beheadings there there was like pu public executions there like chopping people's heads off hanging people like it was like there was this goes back to ancient times there's so much history you were just it's always this kind of great reminder of the incredible like history of that town and or that city and um right in that courtyard it connects to it connects to the school and the school is hundreds of years old and it's one of these buildings like many buildings in France where you know they're built upon like you know the top part is like 200 years old this kind of bottom floor is like 400 years old and then it's like you got Roman ruins or something like it's like it goes back like and seriously that was the amazing thing is in that courtyard that was like outside they had these um these plexiglass um uh, kind of giant like tiles, these giant slices of plexiglass. So you could walk across the ground and you look down in the plexiglass and it was these excavated Roman ruins. So you were like walking over, like you could see like, I mean, it's just incredible history. Our school, basically, you know, we played it as a school. It actually used to be a school. It was an old abandoned school, um, Catholic school. Oh. And then before that, it was a, um, it was a convent. So it was a convent for like hundreds of years. And we, we, in the, it was so funny. It's scary. like, we're playing, so scary. We're, no, totally. <laughs> and it's so funny because we're playing it as it used to be like a monastery. And um, like, so it was a monastery that became a, a school. And the, the funny thing is that like, that's not even that much far off from the truth. The truth is it was not a monastery. It was, it was a, it was a convent for nuns. And um which is, which is kind of funny. We take the nun movie and we kind of make- That's so fun. cool. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was really amazing. We were so lucky to find that place. Okay, I do have to ask, did you have any spooky experiences on set? <laughs> Uh-oh. Two people were murdered, okay? I'm not supposed to talk about it, but we're still looking. No, I'm joking. I'm sorry. I, I'm always- Stop so it, looking. stop it. You've done it twice now. <laughs> Um, I know I'm always, there wasn't anything specific to be totally okay. honest. I said that in the interview before and I thought I was going to get shut down for it. No one was murdered. It was a very safe experience. And if anyone was, no one's going to find the body. Don't worry. It is totally, <laughs> um, no, it was, uh, the scariest experiences, you know, when you're shooting a movie, even a scary movie you're like, usually on a day of production, you're surrounded by so many people, even if you only have one person, yeah. the camera, like you got a million people behind you. Um, so it's hard to like really oh, yeah. get not scared. The scariest moments are when you are scouting locations yeah. because you only have a couple people. Oh, that's fair. 
and you're going into these really old places and you know some of the and you know this is like in france and there's like some of these places do do not have electricity they have not had electricity ever and you're going into like little catacombs and then you know some of it you like you might not need for the movie but it's just fun to do it because it's like why not you know it's like the you know how many times do you get a oh, yeah. like, old building yeah, exactly like, exactly like when would you be able to ever do that ever in your life like you have to try it that's so cool exactly like a little bit of ghost hunt kind of <laughs> it's totally like that it totally has that vibe and like we found this one it was like um oh my gosh what was like uh the the french catacomb movie great oh as above so below exactly there was moments like that where we'd find this like old furniture and like these like these old little kind of catacomb underground walkways and it was just it was like you know there'd be broken or like a chair just by itself and you just see this stuff and it's so spooky and it's so evocative you're like why is there just a one chair down here like what was one person doing just sitting here and it's like did they just put that in for storage and where's the other stuff it's like it's always, it like kind of creates, and it's funny how your mind just gets going with that, especially when you're scared, your mind's like, like on, on turbocharge, you know? Yeah. Well, Michael, thank you so much for chatting with me about the nun too and uh, fooling me twice. Really shame on me at this point. I really appreciate you taking the time and congratulations on the film. I really appreciate your time. Hey, thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. Have a good night, day, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>